Hello, and welcome to Markets in Focus. My name is Joe Bell, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the most interesting financial market themes that I'm observing. So this week, we're going to talk about the end of the second quarter, obviously in late June. Officially, the bull market ended, and we now have turned the corner to a bear market, the first since back during the pandemic March of 2020. Uh, if you look at bear markets in history, let's take a look at what we might expect or what we've seen historically. And then finally, let's talk about the relationship between the current inflation rate and the federal funds rate, still showing that the path forward is likely higher for interest rates. So the bull market is over, ended in June officially when the market had a drawdown of 23.5%, nearly 24% drawdown from the beginning of January. If we look back, it was a really short one, only 21 months long. Really quick, fast gain, though. If you remember, it was one of the fastest bull markets to double back in August of, of last year. All in all, a gain of 114% over 21 months in the books. I mentioned short, it's the shortest since at least 1948, you can see uh, just over 21 months long at 114%. Uh, in terms of average and median, it's a little higher than the median, uh, pretty significantly lower than the average. You had a, a, a few outliers there during 1982 and, of course, the, the big bull market in 1990s and, and really the one after post-financial crisis to the upside that drug that average higher, but higher than the median. But if you look at that average, less than half of the typical 50 months it takes to gain during a bull market. It's a pretty short bull market looking back. Now, we're, we've hit that bear market terrace where that means we've had a 20% or more drawdown. You can look at currently there, 23.6% drawdown. We've had a little bit of a relief rally the last, uh, the start of the third quarter so far. A little too early to say whether we're in this bottoming process right now. But if you just look at the drawdown we've had, on average, historically in bear markets since 1950, average drawdowns of about 30%, uh, the median around 25%. So maybe slightly less than historically we've seen. It doesn't mean it's over here. We could make new lows, but we're kind of in that territory of historically where we typically see bear markets bottom. Now let's talk about the average length of bear markets. We've just been around six months now. Um, just north of six months here during the first week of July, but as of the end of the quarter here, um, since 1950, you can see the median at seven months, average of 11 months, we're a little bit shorter than perhaps those typical bear markets have lasted. And we're still in the midst of it, so it's not over yet. So history might argue that perhaps it's gonna be longer. The one interesting thing, if you look back at some of the bear markets here recently, um, we technically only had one bear market. This would be the second, one during the pandemic and one uh, right now would be two. But if you include, all right, technically we didn't have a 20% drawdown on a closing basis, but intraday basis we did back in 2011 and 2018, where we were right around that 19 to 20% drawdown in equities. If you include those, bear markets have been much quicker since the financial crisis. One of the reasons I believe is the fact that the Fed has been a very accommodative larger force in the markets post-financial crisis. And we've seen some of these bear market bottoms um, recover much quicker because of that. Now, one of the differences between some of these recent bear market recoveries that have been so quick and this one is the Fed position right now. Take a look at this chart here. We've got the, the last day of the Fed tightening cycle. So when the Fed stopped raising rates, historically, every Fed rate tightening cycle since 1974, you can look at the CPI percentage change, so how high is inflation, and every single time when they stop raising rates, the Fed funds rate is higher than the 12-month growth rate in inflation. We'll take a look at this right now, and this, is, this really shows the picture of the overall risk in the stock market when you look at inflation still north of 8% year-over-year growth and the Fed funds target rate. Remember, there's a range. This is the top of the range at 1.8%. Most expectations is that is going higher. And the Fed is obviously with this, this stronger than expected jobs report here this morning. I think the Fed continues to push higher, probably with multiple 50 to 75 basis point cuts. But the main point being, when you have this discrepancy, this is a high risk market environment for equities. And if you're pointing and looking to factors that are different this time versus some of the V bottom recoveries that we've had, 
don't look any further than this. Until you see this relationship narrow, or in fact, the Fed funds rate go above inflation, now that can, that can mean inflation comes down dramatically, right? This is a high risk environment for equities. This is a lot different than those four or five, six month bear markets that we've experienced since post-financial crisis. You don't have a Fed that is accommodative right now. And with the strong jobs report, perhaps still has the green light to continue to push their foot on the gas pedal with higher interest rates, which is a contributor to the, the economic slowdown that we're in the midst of having in some of the bear market territory we are with stocks. So with that, I want to thank everyone for watching and share a fun story here. Uh, a gentleman, a 30-year-old in the U.S. decided to bring a little life to time, to clocks. He said that, how much fun do you normally have looking down at the clock? It's usually because you're stressed because you're late. So he decided to make watches that don't tell time. His videos went viral on TikTok. He's got a website. I believe it's called something along the lines of watches that don't tell time.com. So if you were thinking about doing that, that's taken. And he sells a few different variations of, of rubber duckies in little bathtubs that apparently he said are cute and will make everyone smile. So we'll see if this, this uh, takes off here, but apparently he's had a pretty good traction so far, a little novelty, but we'll have to see if it turns into a real business over time. With that, I want to thank everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.